coffins. Beautiful and terrifying all in the same cold breath. It never occurred to me that coffins for children would simply be smaller versions of those made for adults. I just always thought they were a one-size-fits-all scenario. I mean, I'd been to a few funerals in my time, and even those who could barely fit through a door seemed to be stuffed into a normal-sized coffin. But not my daughter's. Hers. Hers was half the size of my wife's. Did you know they sold them with cute pink unicorns or baby blue dinosaurs? Because I didn't. I didn't. Leaving behind a grieving father and husband, Andrew, the priest rattled on with his cookie-cutter eulogy. So generic, so vague, so bullshit. I hated him. I hated him for all the things he hadn't done to deserve my wrath. I hated him for being a stronger man and speaking in place of me to these, these pretenders who had come to mourn my family. The air was rich with the aroma of flowers, creating a permanent association with the smell that would probably haunt me for the rest of my life. If I decided to live, that is. With a head weighed down with a near-lethal dose of prescription drugs, I managed to turn my gaze to my in-laws. Sylvie's parents noticed the awkward movement and both shot blurry eyes toward me. Her mother gave a single sympathetic nod before turning back to the stage. Her father, on the other hand, glared at me with an intense, hot loathing that could melt the layer of permafrost in the most frigid ice lands on this planet. His expression said it all. You let them die. You let them die. I ripped my gaze away from them and let my head hang low, no longer able to muster the strength to face judgment from the people who'd entrusted me to protect their daughter and granddaughter. Seated next to me, my mother grabbed my cold, lifeless hand and rested her forehead on my shoulder. I could smell the coffee on her breath as she silently cried, and it disgusted me. I wanted to yell at her and demand to know how anyone could drink coffee on a day like this. Her sobs felt like a mixture of sorrow outlined with a palpable relief that it hadn't been me, and I pulled my hand from hers. She didn't notice, or if she did, she at least didn't acknowledge it. My father, who'd been blinking back his tears for the last twenty minutes, reached over and patted my upper back a few times. Just to let me know he was there. But I wasn't. I was drowning in a pool of anguish inside my own head, not even caring to try and stay above the surface. I wanted to be with my girls again. A pathetic speck of water resembling a tear attempted to roll down my cheek, only to be absorbed into my skin from how small the drop was. <sighs> Hell, even my own tear ducts were too depressed to function properly. To make up for the lack of water flooding from my eyes, my gaping jaw let loose with a strand of drool. I hadn't even realized my mouth was hanging open, but I also didn't care. Moving an arm that felt like it weighed as much as a cinder block, I managed to wipe away the saliva and looked up at the caskets which contained my family. Ten years with Sylvie, the unequivocal love of my life and a high school sweetheart who had given me a perfect daughter, Allison, five years ago. Like a forgotten box of old memories that had been discarded in the corner of the attic, the coffins now held ten years of love with my wife and five years with my sweet baby girl. So many years of happiness, so many memories, now locked in these boxes, which were to be buried in the dirt this afternoon. They can't breathe! A deranged man screamed, but everyone ignored him. I looked around to see who dared yell at my family's funeral and why no one was stopping him, only to realize that I was now standing with an outstretched hand reaching toward the coffins. Embarrassment, who had always had limitless authority on when I acted, asked my drugged mind if it should just take the day off. My mind agreed, and I felt nothing as I looked around at all the faces, trying so desperately to not make eye contact with me. 